I'm Midge Rendell. I'm the chairman of the Rendell Center for Civics and Civic Engagement, and I also happen to be a judge. And as a judge, I've had the honor and the privilege to preside over jury trials. I'm currently a court of appeals judge, but I was a trial judge. And for those years when I was a trial judge, I loved having juries. We call them a jury of your peers. Well, they are everyday people who get called to serve for jury duty. And they come into the courtroom and there's usually a panel of say 50 potential jurors. And we're gonna talk about what happens when that happens. Very often people are scared when they come to jury duty. What's going to happen? What am I gonna to have to do? I've never done this before. But it's actually a very common sense job. It's to use your judgment, to hear from witnesses, decide who you believe, and then take instructions from the judge. But the beginning of the process can be a little scary. You're brought into a room of say 50 or 60 people and the lawyers are there and the judges are there, uh, the judge is there and the lawyers tell you what the case is about and they start calling, uh, asking questions, who's ever been convicted of a felony or whose relative is a police officer if it's a criminal case. A lot of case, a lot of questions to find out whether jurors can be fair and impartial. And that's the bottom line. Can you be fair? Can you be impartial? Or do you have a situation in your past which might make you conflictive or biased or gonna favor one side or the other? Uh, and sometimes the jurors are asked, well, you have this situation, does this render you uh, partial? Do you think you'd go one way or the other? And sometimes the juror will say, well, I may have had this situation, but I think I can be fair. Uh, so we're, call, we're calling that the impaneling of the jury and jurors are selected and asked to sit and wait till we have 12 jurors or in a civil case, maybe fewer and a couple of alternates in case during the course of the trial, someone is disabled or, or can't sit anymore. Um, and then when I would impanel the jury and I would swear them in and they would raise their right hand and they would take their oath as a juror, a lot of them, I could see the fear and trepidation on their faces. But then when the case proceeded and after the, the verdict came in, I would go and talk to them afterwards and they loved the experience, the experience of being part of the justice system, an extremely important part of the justice system. So what does the jury do? The jury decides the case. They decide the facts, who to believe. Very often there can be a dispute. Did the defendant run the red light? And we have witnesses testifying. The jury has to decide, who do you believe? And then once they decide who they believe, based upon the testimony that's before them, not based on anything outside the record, they're confined to what happens in that courtroom. The judge instructs them on the law and they have to then deliberate. And those deliberations are entirely quiet and private and they do this on their own and they come up with a verdict. The main thing the juror needs to do is listen to the evidence. And when I was a trial court judge, if I saw that a juror was daydreaming or not paying attention or maybe catching a cat nap here or there, I would take a break, take them to the jury room and make sure that they were paying attention. Did they need a break? And sometimes the testimony can go on and on. But they really have to pay attention. So let's say in an action based upon a contract, somebody has a contract for, let's say it's a, a pest uh, uh, exterminating contract and you have to decide whether somebody sent the contract back or not, jury has to decide who they believe based on the witnesses. And they use their common sense. You know, you listen to someone and you come up with all kinds of reasons why you think they're telling you the truth or not. Maybe it's their body language. Maybe it's that they said something inconsistent or on cross-examination, they took back what they said on direct examination. So as a juror, you really use your common sense. It's what we do every day. It's not rocket science. So the judge will tell the jury, listen to all the evidence. You must decide the case based only on the evidence produced and the instructions that the judge gives. 
And the judge will say, don't discuss the case among yourselves until all the evidence is in. Now, it may surprise you, but I was once on a jury. I was a juror. And the judge gave us instructions at the outset of the case about what it was about, and then said, listen to the evidence and don't discuss the case. Well, that's very hard because you have a break or you go to lunch and you're basically living and breathing with these people for days on end. And you don't discuss the case with the other jurors because everybody has their own view of what's happened. And you need to wait to decide the case until all the evidence is in. So if you start discussing the case and one of the other jurors says, oh, I don't believe him for a minute and et cetera, et cetera, you need to say, well, I'm not gonna discuss this because I wanna just let it all sink in and make sure I understand. Now it will say, I will say in the case that I sat on, the case settled after the plaintiff testified. So we didn't get to deliberate on the case and we didn't get to discuss it, which was a shame, but, but it was hard to do but you really did feel like you were part of the justice system and a really important part. And I have mock trials with our young people, our young students, and I love taking the juries out and love hearing their views about who they believed and what they thought was the, the outcome that we should reach. And it's really, really interesting because kids come up with the most wonderful common sense reasons as to why they believe someone or not. And it is, as I said, a matter of common sense, listening, taking it all in. And then in the deliberation room, well, first of all, the instructions. After the case closes, the judge gives instructions for the jury because they need to understand exactly how they're supposed to do their job. And the instructions will be as to certain factors to take into account for credibility, how to assess credibility, uh, what is evidence, what was admitted, the caution that the lawyer's arguments and questions are not evidence, only what the witness said is evidence. And there could be very lengthy instructions, not only uh, about witnesses and credibility, but also on the law that needs to be applied. If it is a contract action, what controls whether there was a breach of the contract or a material breach of the contract. And they're very lengthy instructions. They can be 30 or 40 pages long. And after I would deliver these instructions orally, I would also give the jury, each juror, a copy of the instructions to take into the jury room because they would need that as a reference. Because it can be complicated and there can be disputes among the jurors as to what to, what to credit and what not to credit and how they're supposed to view the evidence and what the elements of a crime, let's say it's a criminal case, the intent that's necessary or certain defenses, there's a lot to be considered. So having these jury instructions in the jury room lets them go over them and come through their deliberations in a reasoned analytic fashion. And it can take a long time. As you know, we've heard where juries are deliberating for days on end, it, and especially in a criminal case, you have someone's fate the verdict of guilt or innocence. And in a criminal case, the case needs to be proven by the government beyond a reasonable doubt. And the judge will instruct on that. In a civil case, the case needs to be proven by a preponderance, which is more just a weighing of evidence and the judge will instruct on that. But these burdens on the parties are very important and will be part of what the jury will be considering in the jury room. So the verdict sheet that the jury considers may have specific questions based upon who they believed or did they think this person was negligent or did the criminal, the defendant have the requisite intent then they moved down. Um, or it may just have a simple, after considering, do you find for the plaintiff or defendant? If it's a civil case, the jury may be asked to assess damages. How much money should be paid to this plaintiff who is successful in this contract action. What kind of damages did they experience? And the jury will have been uh, instructed as to how to view that. In a criminal case, it will be guilt or not guilt, guilty or not guilty. And it will be up to the judge to impose sentence after a lot of post-trial procedures have gone on. So in a civil case, the jury can be asked to assess the damages 
uh, including what can be called punitive damages when they think there has been a very intentional wrong uh, and they should be essentially, the plaintiff, the defendant should be essentially punished. Uh, but in a criminal case, the ultimate sentence goes to the judge. So the jury plays a really, really important role. Uh, and that's why perhaps at the outcome of the case, the jury is a little bit nervous about what's gonna go on. I would have jurors who would almost be in tears when they were impaneled in a jury thinking about what they had to do. But at the end of the case, I would go in and talk to the jurors and they would ask, do we reach the right result? And I would say, you, you deliberated long and hard, you applied the law to the facts of the case, and I applaud you. I'm not gonna say whether I would have done the same thing or whether it was right or wrong, but you did exactly what your duty is as a jury. And they love the experience. They love the fact that they were such an integral part of the system. Uh, and sometimes the rules are tough and they have to follow the rules, even though there can be a sympathetic case. Uh, and I've had situations where the jury seems to be unwilling or not, enjoying the prospect of finding someone guilty, but they applied the facts, the law to the facts, and had to find that the person was, was guilty beyond reasonable doubt. So it's a difficult task, but it's so important. And I urge you uh, to, to tell your parents if they get a call for jury duty, please show up and serve. It's so, so important. So I'll leave you with that note. It's one of the most important things a citizen can do that and voting. And I would urge you when you're called that you look forward to it and you realize that it's difficult, but you also realize that at the end, you will have found it a very rewarding part of your citizenship.